by a score of four to three. Sam Wetstein, Kristen Bender, Chris Alumalum, Akeem Johnson, the goal scorers for the host Bobcats who are looking to make it back-to-back -back championships. The MCAC trophy is under lock and key and the Bobcats believe they know what it takes to keep it in their possession for a second straight year. In terms of repeating that, like we just have to play how we've but not necessarily the last few games, but definitely how we played in the past seasons. Uh, the non-negotiables, working hard for each other, and um, it's just accountability. The BU men's futsal team made history on the road in 2019, winning the program's first ever indoor title. 
This weekend, the Cats are hosting their first ever conference Final Four. We never had it home, and we, we've been lucky to win a few championships last year, but it's just really exciting for all the guys to be able to hopefully win one at home with uh, home fans here. The Cats are going for a league title sweep after capturing their first ever soccer championship in October. During the indoor season, the Cats went undefeated through the first seven games, but lost two of their final three contests. They finished in second place in the standings. We lost uh, quite a few guys from outdoor to indoor, but you know we have a good core group of guys, and each uh, each game is uh, there's no easy games, but we've been uh, improving from each game and uh, learning from each game, so we're really bringing all best uh, here at the final weekend. What I like most about this team is like, no one seems nervous, like everyone's actually, if anything, we're anxious to play, like we can't wait till playoffs, like everyone's been talking about it. Now that it's finally here, it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, like everyone's just so happy and like, we play for each other and I think that's what really pushes us. So here's a look at the tail of the tape and what's got us here, just four teams Left standing, CMU Blazers, 8-1-1. One, one. There's the Bobcats who have advanced to tomorrow's final at 3 o'clock. St. Boniface and Providence rounding out the top four. A lot of hardware handed out earlier this week. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the broadcast. Tyler Crace and Thomas Friesen alongside for this second men's semifinal here at the Healthy Living Center. And Thomas, what are you expecting in this one between CMU and Providence? Well, if it's anything close to like the one we saw before, it'll be a great one. Obviously, the top team in the league looking to come out and probably score early, put a dent in it. On the other side, you have what I think is the most veteran, strongest kind of defender and leader in, uh, in Braden Owen from Providence. Uh, been around the, the league long enough, and experience is huge in this game. You'll see rookies that come into the league, and they might be a good outdoor player, but it takes a long time to get used to this game, and when you have guys like that who have been around it, you look to those guys to make a big difference. So for the fourth seed, 500 record, he could be the difference maker for them. Blazers and the Pilots coming up from the Healthy Living Center, the second men's semifinal. The winner looking to join the Bobcats in tomorrow's championship game at 1 o'clock. We're going to throw it downstairs. My final match between the Providence University College Pilots and the Canadian Mennonite University Blazers with a spot in tomorrow's championship final on the line. Time now for your starting lineups. Introducing first from the Providence University College Pilots, which are the number four seed of this year's tournament. Number one, Justin Hoffman. Number six, Jeffrey Horton. Number one, Austin Blackwell. Number 13, Anel Athwell. And number 19, Giovanni Benitez. And the starting lineup for the Canadian Mennonite University Blazers, who are representing the number one seed. Number two, Aiden Beckingham. Number eight, Victor Hugo. Number 10, Ryan Jensen. Number 12, Caleb Jutzi. And number 14, Mateos Moreno. Referees for this contest are Brian Mentenko and Anthony Alexander. Second men's semifinal about to get underway. Pilots and the Blazers facing off. The winner to meet the host, Brandon University Bobcats, in tomorrow's men's futsal championship game, which will be a 1 o'clock start. Bobcats victorious earlier today, defeating St. Boniface La Rouge by a score of 4-3. to three. So there's the whistle, and we're underway here. Tyler Crayston, Thomas Friesen. Alongside for the broadcast, thanks a lot for tuning in. 
And that'll be the Pilots controlling things here early on. That's Benitez with the corner kick, and there's a lightning quick strike there by Dick that just missed the far corner. So it's the Blazers controlling things right now. They're the number one seed are the CMU Blazers. Brian Jensen controls it now to Beckingham, number two there for CMU. Busting in are the Blazers, or pardon me, the Pilots. That one goes out of play. So Beckingham boots it up, finds an open Blazers player. Blazers looking to strike early here. Getting that one out of harm's way are the Pilots, and they'll try to bring it back up the other way. They're caught at midcourt, though, and need to double back to reset here. That was a swing and a kick by Athwell that missed. Yeah, it'll go out for a kick in the corner there. Anyone who hasn't seen this game before, there's no throw-ins, except for if the goalie gets, if it go goes out the end line for a goal kick, it's a goal clearance and the goalie gets to play it out of their hands, but everything else is kicked in and players have four seconds to get the ball back in play, so no time to waste. So it was Horton that kicked it up, but found a Blazers player instead, trying to thread the needle. It's the Pilots that control it, they bring it into the Blazers zone. And Benitez has the power in his hands right now for the Pilots. Number four seed looking to pull off the upset against the number one ranked CMU Blazers. And a nice stop there. Well, they're, minute, minder. they're the ones creating all the chances early right now. Blazers tucking in on defense, trying to calm the storm a little bit. Control that midcourt. And it's Horton that puts it back into play. At midcourt was Athwell. And here are the Blazers breaking out on offense, trying to find the edge and a wide open net and the Blazers strike early, finding Twine. And the Brazilian connection strikes again for them. Moreno, the all-conference player with 15 goals, finds Victor Hugo, who, uh, who got, he had a hat trick uh, in, that, in that one we talked about that that shootout victory for BU over CMU in that semifinal a few years ago. That was his rookie year, and the Blazers off to a hot start with the two Brazilians and the two fifth years, Beckingham and Jensen, starting the game. Benitez and crew control things in their own zone. So Hugo, the goal scorer, nice and early here for the number one ranked CMU Blazers. Out of play goes, so the Blazers control it one more time. It's number two, Aiden Beckingham. Puts it back towards the tender. And it was with Moreno. Now it's a chance for the Pilots. Opportunity short-lived, though. And it's with Ryan Jensen. Dished it off to Moreno. Uh, quick swing, quick kick, I should say. A long lead pass. It's off the head of Beckingham. The pilots are going to regroup here. Walking the tightrope where the Blazers kept it in their possession. Now it's quickly back the other way, and that one going to the far corner there. An opportunity by the Blazers. That was number 13, Athwell. Searching for that far corner, but missed. You would have seen a few of those uh, those save attempts the other day by Tawning. When he has a chance to get his hands on it, he will. A lot more of an outdoor style. Uh, Yotzi actually has a bit of a background as a hockey goalie, as has the last kind of string of Blazers keepers. And you'll see a lot more of the react. The quick first reaction is to make a kick save, and tends to work out a little bit better on the in this game. Back come the Pilots, kick and a miss. And number 12, Caleb Utsi. Gets it to an open teammate. And Ryan Jensen walks the tightrope, brings it back into the pilot zone. 
Searching for the one-timer there, or the Blazers, no dice. So the possession belongs to the number four ranked Providence Pilots, trailing one nothing here in this opening period. That kick sails out of play. That one's out of play as well. You seem to know, well, I know that you're a former CMU Blazer yourself there, Thomas, so what do you think's been some of the, the keys for the Blazers to have been that number one ranked team headed into the Final Four? Is it just a team that's got a lot of experience? How do you kind of see their, their roster shake it out? Well, a lot of it, uh, even though they don't quite have that same style, we talked about the rotations and the players moving around a lot more. Coming from coach from a few years ago, an athletic director, Russell Wilms, who will um, kind of create, use that style. He watches a bunch of stuff from Thailand, the way that they play, and tries to implement, try to implement that. Now with former uh, Red River Rebel and current head coach Anderson Pereira, it's a little bit more static, but uh, relying a lot on getting those key guys in big positions like Moreno and Victor Hugo up at the top, um, becking him as a cannon of a left foot. Hits the ball. That his shot's probably harder than anybody that I've ever had to face in practice or seen in a game. Um, there's just a few different weapons and guys that have been together for a few years doing it over and over, and that pays off in the long run. What did you find was one of the biggest differences, you know, besides some of the obvious ones from outdoor to indoor when you're trying to refocus on that? Uh, as a goalkeeper, or just in general, goalkeeper. Well, I mean, we talked about the one thing with, with the gloves, with kind of what's your, what's your mentality. Goalkeepers in soccer are about making it as boring as possible, making a tough save look easy and controlling it. Um, you want to trap the ball with the gloves here. You want the ball to go as far away from you as you can at all times. You don't want those rebounds out in front like a hockey game where they can be jammed in. So you're trying to basically just cutting down angles and clearing, clearing the way as soon as you can. And then at the same time, you're a lot more active in the offense. If you can see something down the field to make a quick throw, you can, you can, you can get an assist. You can have somebody take one touch and finish, like this who we see here. Goalkeeper makes a throw to Owen. Pass across just isn't quite connected right there, but that's a good heads up play by the Providence keeper to, to see that gap there. And you can do more than just make saves. Well, I think we find in our area of Western Manitoba anyway that futsal is really starting to to gain a lot of momentum. It's just been interesting talking to you know, different people in town as we've been kind of promoting it over the last couple of weeks that you know, people are kind of wondering what it's all about and, and everything like that. But we saw a real exciting you know, first semifinal with the Bobcat men's team. And here's a little bit of excitement from Hugo trying to deke out the tender. He could not. That was really good by the keeper there just to come out way out of, out of the goal area there and cut down the angle. Didn't really give him much of anything to shoot at. and. He isn't even able to get a touch on it. Nicely done to keep it 1-0 here, almost nine minutes in. Yeah, Justin Hoffman, netminder for Providence Pilots. It's back with Jensen again. And that's Will Anderson, 22. As the Blazers only cross midcourt for the moment and they bring it back into their own zone again. That one flipped up. It's Anderson again, trying to connect with a fellow teammate, not quite. And it stays 1-0 here for the number one ranked CMU Blazers. You can't give chances up like that up though. Eventually, uh, Victor Hugo is gonna find more than a few of them. Pleading for a handball there, not gonna get it. Eventually, we get a free kick to the Blazers. First foul for Providence, and as we've said, six fouls for any team and a half, leads to a 10 meter penalty kick. Yeah, number 15, Randolph Lucas of the Pilots getting tangled up there with the Blazer. There's a heat-seeking missile that is stopped by Justin Hoffman. He's equal to the task. Back at midcourt for Will Anderson. Anderson lets it go. And out of play it went. Yeah, took a touch there off of Christian Dick and out for uh, another corner. So it's the electrifying Victor Hugo. Goes over to Moreno. Back with Hugo one more time. Trying to find the edge down low, cannot. Pilots almost breaking back the other way. There might not be a more frustrating player to play against when you have the ball than Victor Hugo too. He's just all over it quick. 
He won't he won't really hit you. He won't take a foul, but he'll he'll be all over it looking to chip away and poke the ball loose and make it happen. Pretty dangerous up top there. You don't want to leave one guy on an island there if he's coming down one-on-one -on, -one on him. That goes off the pilot's player's head out of play and controlled one more time here by the Blazers. Stop by Will Anderson. Over to Ryan Jensen, number 10, controlled by Moreno. And Moreno, back where it started from, and he scores. And the Blazers are up by a pair. The 14 minute mark of this opening period and it's so nice we get to see it twice on the replay. Good work guys, camera crew to get that one. Yeah, just a quick little release. Hoffman got a touch on it, but just not quite enough to, to keep it away and just the start that the top seed was looking for. We'll see how, uh, how the pilots can respond here. 11 minutes in, down two. In their own zone with Lucas and Horton controlling things in the defensive zone here for the Pilots. Trying to cross midcourt and get something going, trailing by two here. Off Moreno, out of play. Randolph Lucas puts it down and goes back to Horton again. Controlled by Athwell. Athwell sworn by Two Blazer defenders lost the handle on it. Pilots collect and reset up on offense. Fake kick back with Horton. Horton tried to pass down low into the far corner for Athwell, but that was stopped by the Blazers. Yeah, first time we've ever had the chance to host the MCAC Final Four for any sport. Puts all for the Bobcats. BU was victorious in the first semifinal earlier today, 4-3 victors. So winner of this one meets the host Bobcats in the final tomorrow at one. A nice header there by Horton. But Caleb, you'd see number 12 equal to the task. So Lucas holds back to Horton at midcourt. Trying to go down low to Christian Dick. And controlled one more time by the number one ranked Blazers. Turnover, Pilots look to make it count the other way. And shot by Athwell is deflected by Blazer and out of play. Lathwell puts it at midcourt. Horton loads it up. High and out of play. Utsi throws it down the court. Horton got it to it first. Now it goes out of play and it's back with the Blazers anyway. And now we've seen a number of plays again, uh, talking about it earlier during the first game where there's a lot of pressure on somebody at the back and it looks like a great opportunity to play it back to the goalkeeper, but as the futsal rules are on one possession, the goalkeeper can only touch the ball one time without the other team touching it. Unless the goalkeeper goes over half and then they're treated as another attacker. But that's where you'll see a lot of players try to avoid using that keeper's touch as much as possible. Going down the sideline was Will Anderson. We got a yellow card on the play. That's a free kick and Benitez goes in the book there, the all-conference player for Providence, uh, picks up a yellow card there. Like we said, anytime there's a lot more speed involved in a challenge, anything's gonna be viewed as a lot more uh, more reckless than if the players are calmly over the ball going one-on-one, -on -one. so we'll see how they set up there. Just one in the wall for Hoffman, and we'll see what the Blazers draw up. So Anderson gonna switch places with Ryan Jensen. Jensen likes to pass. Looking for a deflection. Second crack at it by Will Anderson. Long high corner kick. Blazers, oh, a heat seeking missile that Hoffman gets his hands on. Yeah, we saw with Will Tawning earlier in that first semifinal. He's got the gloves on, but he's got the fingertips cut off and neither one of these net miners are electing to go with any any gloves. 
Well, for Providence, you're you're hanging in there. You don't want to be giving up too many more. You want to kind of stay within striking distance here, don't you? Well, yeah, and again, we'll say it over and over, but 2-0 can be evaporated really quick. If you start changing what you do and trying to reinvent the wheel, you're, uh, you're not really going to do yourself any favors there. They might have to make some small adjustments, but stay the course. What you're doing is fine. Um, just haven't quite got the got the last touch on it, but they have been creating chances. So far, it's been a pretty good back and forth battle. Just the right touch on a few of those at the end for uh, for CMU to go up too. Well, when you look at this Blazers team and just a little bit that we've seen from them here so far, my first opportunity to watch them for futsal anyway, seem to be a team that you check one guy and think you can control Hugo. Okay, then they got a different. They seem to have a lot of a lot of depth. Well, and they're starting to get that motion going too, where it's fluid. Every everybody's getting involved and in passing at the back, looking for a mismatch, looking for a defender to get a little bit lazy and not completely follow a cut, and and that's where those things will be opened up. So, when you're playing your zone, you're all of a sudden changing. You're finding your new guy more often than than you'd like. So it's Will Anderson, back to Moreno, goes down the middle. Still controlled by the Blazers, stopping in his tracks was Moreno, who puts it up nice and high, a header by Anderson. Ten minutes to go here in this opening period. Clock will just keep on running here. Yeah, the clock will keep running on anything except for a foul. Uh, until the last two minutes, and then it'll stop on pretty much every time the ball's out of play. Looked in the goal with a long pass there was Justin Hoffman trying to find an open teammate downfield with a long lead touchdown pass, but to no avail. Yeah, there's Braden Owen playing more of an offensive role, bigger body. Sometimes you'll actually see that quite a bit is uh, instead of the traditional center back role that he would have played in outdoor, you get some of those big central defenders or, or number nines, a forward, playing up at the top and being somebody to collect the ball, lay it off for the little guys that are cycling around him. And that's kind of what they're trying to do here, it looks like. So corner kick coming up here for the Pilots. Trying to keep that ball from rolling as they set it down for the corner kick. Walking the edge, trying to score, trying to put it through the netminder and cannot. Yeah, strong position there to Hold on, not give up a rebound, and secure the ball and get it out of danger by Yotzi there. It's back with Horton again. He lets it fly. Try to go for the split save. Never got to him with Yotzi. Yotzi rolls it to Beckingham, number two, Aiden Beckingham. Now to Moreno one more time. And he's and got here it. Here come the reinforcements, trying to score. Oh, hit the pipe, rebound. And Beckingham missed on the second attempt for the Blazers, who still lead 2-0 here. Well, what you see there with that give and go between Moreno and McIntyre Ridd is one of the most important reasons that you can't just play your zone and once a guy is out of it, it's not your problem anymore. Kind of becomes an overload when Moreno plays it deep and then follows his pass and has a wide open chance in front of the net. Moreno back to Anderson. Right back where it started from. Finding the edge. And some open real estate as Moreno tried to fly solo there and score. Off the noggin of Anderson. Still controlled by the Blazers. Moreno again. Oh, looking to the heavens. <laughs> Thought he was going to find the back of the net there. <laughs> that would have been something. Two volley passes back to back. Almost with a the finish there. Yeah, but it was McIntyre Ridd that had glorious opportunity there. So trying to break out, they're at midcourt now. They go back to Horton again. Sliding it over to Athwell. Athwell trying to find the edge, cannot. A two on one break the other way for the Blazers, led by Victor Hugo. He stops it for Beckingham. Yeah, he might have wanted to go for the right there, but Beckingham, a lefty, uh, wanted to put that left footed rocket on it, gave the extra half second for Prov to get in front of it and shut that down. That one's gobbled up by Justin Hoffman. Possession still belongs to the Pilots. That one easily accepted by Yitzi. 6.40 to go here. 
An opening period. A nice footwork there by Beckingham. Lost the handle on it, though. And that'll be a yellow. <laughs> yeah, Beckingham right in the grill of the Providence player. He's not one to take many yellow cards. Surprised. So the Blazers are going to build the wall here. See Utsi glued to that goal post. Horton loads it up. So if you heard the comment there talking about it being a, a foul, it wasn't a foul. It's just called delaying the restart of play there. It goes into the book as a yellow, but it's not one of the six fouls on the board. So Blazers looking for a long lead pass. Now it's the pilot's turn. Monkey see, monkey do, and it's going to be controlled here by the Blazers. That was Ryan Jensen, 10, that put it up. A little flip, almost a score by Hugo. And Hugo's in hot pursuit again, like a water bug out there for the Blazers. It is number eight, Victor Hugo. Yeah, that little give and go down the for the Blazers down their left side has been working pretty well and creating some opportunities. Again, you have to follow that guy when he makes that pass down the sideline. Trying to find Horton in the goalmouth scramble area. And you'd see long lead pass. Ooh, a header that almost got past the goalkeeper. Hoffman of the Pilots. Trying to break out on offense. They cannot. They're stuck at midcourt are the Pilots. It's a tough scenario for the goalkeeper. You know that if it goes straight in on the, off the throw, it doesn't count. But you instinctively want to play that ball, and then just a little flick from the head uh, is good enough to score. You really have to play for the flick and expect it to come. And um, if it doesn't touch, then just let it go straight in if that's what you have to do. But tough spot when that one little flick is hard to react to right in front of you. Well, you almost have got to be playing the better safe than sorry rule and, ju and just play it. Exactly. You know? Well, but that's the thing. You overcommit, and, uh, and then they redirect it just enough. In so the professionally, the futsal rules say that you can't throw the ball more than two-thirds of the field, so that kind of negates those opportunities. But Here's here Hugo. with the smaller gyms and that we play in, they kind of have to let them throw it all, the, all, all over the place. Good defensive stop there by the Blazers. Hunkering down on defense here with a 2 0 lead at the four minute mark of this opening period. Back with the dynamic one, Hugo. Accepts that pass, trying to find the edge, lost it. It's Randolph Lucas knocking it out of play. Couple of cracks at it for the Blazers. Yeah, Concepcion nearly pokes that one in. Created that other play with the back heel, and it'll go uh, into Hoffman's hands here. It's a long throw, a header by Ryan Jensen. Controlled again by Horton of the Pilots. Horton elects to fly solo there. Utsi picks it up. Hugo Jensen stays with Jensen. The pass picked off by Horton. Back with the Blazers again one more time. In the CMU zone, Ryan Jensen trying to get some breathing room. Went to Hugo. Hugo lost it. Christian Dick creating the turnover. The pass to Benitez. And he fires just inches wide of the post. And they'll uh, say it was tipped wide and out for a corner. Or, or maybe it was out before the pass even was kicked because he would have gone to the other corner had it been ruled out on off of the goalkeeper. But there goes Hugo, that big burst of speed again. Got tripped up, though. And now you have uh, Providence. You have Braden Owen wearing the goalkeeper jersey. He's going to try to come up and get active. That was played back to him. Goalkeeper only gets one possession, and since he's wearing the goalkeeper shirt, that's going to be an indirect free kick to the Blazers. What they want to do here is get a bit of a power play, kind of a five on four pulling their goalie and have him be have the more 
skilled player with his feet than Hoffman be involved in the offense for these last few minutes, try to spark something. Teams will switch it out and he can sub on and off for Hoffman at any point right now. But unfortunately for them, they tried to play, his teammate tried to play back to him and he's not allowed to take that second touch. Waits the last possible moment. Uh, he can't let it go in the back of the net because that'll be a goal. But the moment that he touches it, it's this free kick here. We'll see what happens. So the pilot's got a wall built up. Not a whole lot you can do there with an indirect free kick and five guys standing no. in front of the net. Other than maybe blast one and make a guy a little bit more reluctant to stand in front of the next one, but... Yeah, with Jensen trying to thread the needle. There's a turnover, two on one. There's a big stop there by Utsi. Off his feet and almost into the Healthy Living Center rafters. That was hit hard. So Horton's got it back, sets it down. And it's Benitez, under two minutes to play here. It's Horton holding, trying to find far corner. Utsi rolls it down over to Moreno. Wrestling forward at midcourt, Blazers pilots will. Jensen, now it's Hugo walking the tightrope. Almost took a nifty pass there by Concepcion. Pilots are sniffing out a few of these plays pretty nicely now. They were quick on the ball to shut down that give and go, and then the back heel there by Concepcion. Same thing he did a few minutes ago, and this time they're all over it. There's a kick. There's a foul on the play there too, by the way. Yeah, looking at the foul count, it's only 3-0 right now. Pilots have three, but 90 seconds left. Not likely they pick up three more and have that become an issue. They'll reset up after the five-minute break. So Jeffrey Horton, back to Benitez. Athwell, Benitez, midcourt. Benitez lets it fly, sails too far. Utsi picked it up off the top of the wall. Timeout CMU there, so they'll take a minute of a break here. So the way things are gonna look here, we still got two more games to go and this one's all said and done. So we're gonna have the women's semifinals at five and seven today. So we got the Blazers and the Rebels coming up at 5 and 7 o'clock to wrap up semifinal Saturday. It's going to be the host Bobcats, the number four seed, looking to play the role underdog and knock off the undefeated St. Boniface Le Rouge. And then the finals tomorrow, 1 o'clock for the men's final. Of course, the host Bobcats have already punched their ticket after a 4-3 win earlier today. And then the women's championship game will be at 3 o'clock. And coming up during halftime, got a video feature on our Canada West men's basketball rookie of the year, Anthony Tigakili. And then we're going to recap all of the all-stars and major award winners from men's and women's futsal in the Manitoba College's athletic conference. So that's all coming up. In our halftime show here on WCG TV, T. Cray along with Thomas Friesen on the call here this weekend for the men's games. Former women's BU soccer star JC Castle will be alongside for the women's games on WCG TV. So it's at midcourt right now and controlled by Hugo and his Blazers. Hugo stops dead in his tracks and has still got a hold on it. And then there was Moreno back to Hugo at midcourt and letting it fly was Jensen. <laughs> and Concepcion picked off his teammates' pass there. That looked like it was going intended for Hugo to make something happen and the Pilots will take over. Down under a minute to play in the first half. Yeah, they got the netminder pulled and have got the extra attacker out there in Braden Owen. See, and there he is playing deeper. He's not at the top, even though he's the goalkeeper, because if he goes back on his own side of half, he only gets that one touch. But now the net's open. Oh. And that's going to be a red. It should be a red, and it is. Now what? He reaches the there? Well, the keeper was out. He made the play to try to save it from the goal. Moreno shot it. It was on net and he reached his arm out to knock that down. So Anil Athwal takes red. That's gonna be, uh, he w it looked like he was actually outside the penalty area. We're gonna check it again here on the, on the tape. He it's was outside the line. So it's not a six meter penalty shot. They can have a wall, but uh, pilots are frustrated about this one. 
But nope, it's, he saves the goal. Ultimately, he's out for two minutes. Well, he's out for the game. The team's down a player for two minutes. So these 35 seconds, whether or not there's a goal or how many goals, and then the next, oh, the first minute 25 of the second half, it'll be five on four. But it's not 3-0. So that kick's deflected. 33.5 is what we got left here on our score clock here. So it's controlled on the power play go the CMU Blazers. It's up top to Jensen and back where it started from with Jensen. Trying to thread the needle, but Horton was there. Saw that one coming. Long lead pass by Braden Owen. Deflected up and out of play. It was Benitez that had a beat on it just for a moment, though. And it's Utsi with the bowling ball roll. Over to Jensen. Now it's with Hugo. Time for one more shot. Moreno, he's got it again. The final second's clicking away. And the first period is in the books, and it's the number one ranked CMU Blazers with a 2-0 lead as we get into halftime here. So we're going to start off our halftime show with a look at the Canada West. Men's basketball rookie of the year, Anthony Tiga Killey. He was also named to the conference all-rookie team. And on Wednesday night, the National Men's Basketball Championship also named to the U Sports All-Rookie Team. So Anthony Tiga Killey with the hat trick. The big award, though, in the conference came as he was named the Canada West Men's Basketball Rookie of the Year. First year Bobcat star Anthony Tiga Killey got the ball and ran with it en route to being recognized as Canada West Rookie of the Year. I just got the opportunity and then I had a good coaching staff that believed in me and teammates that believed in me as well and you know just the whole school and uh, the whole Bobcat program that believed in me so it was just really a blessing. I just I was just in a good position all around. Tiga Killey had 15 double doubles as a freshman. He cracked the top 10 in league scoring with 17.4 points per game and finished second in the conference in rebounding at 11.9 per game. The first time I've seen a first year player come in and be top in scoring and then top in rebounding also and consistently did it throughout the whole year. So it's it pretty impressive. BU rallied to clinch a playoff spot and Tiga Keeley had a huge role in the Bobcats winning five in a row. He posted game highs of 24 points and 11 rebounds as Brandon beat the nationally ranked Manitoba Bisons on the road in the second last game of the regular season. Those last few games we didn't have him, we were making playoffs, we were making that five game winning streak right without him so he's a huge star team and we're lucky we got him. The six foot six forward from Gatineau, Quebec picked up right where he left off in his Canada West postseason debut. He had a 17 point performance as the Bobcats nearly knocked off a veteran Vikes team in a one game first round showdown in Victoria. You know when you get an award like that you can't really just do it by yourself. You have to have people around you that support you and that help you to achieve those things. So I think it's just a big motivation for the entire team. Where do you see him in year five here? I mean, who knows? I mean, rookie of the year this year, all rookie team. I mean, it's only up from here. We're all proud of him because he just wants to be great. So and that's what he's been doing. And then. In the future, I see him maybe an MVP of the league or even more. So we're at halftime here, second men's semifinal. It is the number one ranked CMU Blazers leading the Providence Pilots 2-0 at halftime. Earlier this afternoon, it was the host Bobcats, 4-3 victors over St. Boniface to book their spot for the championship final on the Bobcats roster. Well, we got the coach of the year. We've got the league MVP. And here they are. There's Coach Jesse Rozier. It's the third time, third straight year that he's been named coach of the year for men's futsal. And the MVP is William Tawning, the Danish Dynamo goalkeeper. Standing tall between the pipes. He also scored nine goals during the season. Let's hear from the two big award winners, and we'll continue recapping all the All-Stars as well. Oh, it's up there. It's up there because this is um, especially being on this team, being as close as we are um, and being supported by the team every single day and uh, just strive for greatness with these guys and being uh, this, the coaching staff. The guys have been behind me every single day, every single minute since I got here and uh, it's just 
it's just great to get this for the team. Is there any room left in the trophy case for another for another coach of the year award for you? <laughs> I think that just speaks to to what the guys have accomplished, and you know we've coached a lot of people, and and I've coached a lot of people a long time, and um, I think you can give them the tools and and what you you'd like to see, and, and try to hold them to a standard, but they need to be willing to to you know do do what what they need to 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 achieve success and. Um, I think it's just a testament to the group we've had and the groups we've had over the last few years. I'm just very excited. Like it's just, I'm, it, it's just, it's just nice to see like how hard work pays off, and it's just nice to see like the long way of Cam, like over the over the years. I feel like I'm really improved as a player, and I'm just glad to have received this. Being in my third year now, I've become more of a leader on the team than I have been in previous years. And I think that's just shown with my confidence on the court, taking people on one-on-one -on -one and taking more shots. And those things have led to goals for me and assists and it's helped us to win games. <laughs>
Long pass. We got a player down there, Ryan Jensen, is yeah. in some discomfort down on the floor here as he collided there with Christian Dick. Yeah, a bit of an awkward play with the ball up in the air and swinging through it. I don't know if he's kind of holding his tailbone there. Yep. It's not the first time he's gone down on a play, though, but. He's going to walk it off. And the crowd here gives him a nice round of applause here. They did stop the clock for that, so uh, injuries are one other thing that they'll they'll pause it for, not let you milk it down, because the refs don't add time on at the end of the game, like in outdoor. There's Anderson, back to Jensen. Trying to thread the needle and find Moreno. Yeah, great read by Lucas there to, to stuff that one out. So we'll do it all over again here with Ryan Jensen. To Hugo, back to Jensen. Trying to cut through the defenders, cannot. Benitez, back to Dick. Now to Horton. Horton to Dick. Stops at midcourt. Horton holds. And dishes it off to Benitez. Backwards started from with Horton one more time. And they're set up in the five on four now. We'll see if they can capitalize. But if there's a turnover, look out. And Horton, <laughs> gonna be careful here. We've got two Blazer defenders swarming around him. And that's actually a smart play there by Horton to, to just roll it out to safety before letting the two on one turn into a turnover with an empty net. Rebound, picked up. Oh, that one's just hanging on the <laughs> top of the bar there. The pilot's coming very close to breaking the goose egg here. Still trailing 2-0. That one just kind of defied the laws of gravity there. It just kind of hung on top of the bar. Well, and Horton was turning around and running the other way to celebrate and <laughs> looked back much to his dismay. The, everybody else was still playing. But... So the Blazers trying to bust in as Jensen lost the handle on it. And here comes Benitez. Tried to find Dick with the pass. Nope. Possession still belongs to the number four ranked Providence Pilots. Here's Horton looking for a corner. And there's a little screen there by Dick to create the open shooting lane. It's a smart play because you got two refs for the most part watching the ball. So anything that happens off the ball is... Uh, is admittedly really tough to spot. Moreno back to Jensen. Now to Anderson, to Moreno. Moreno trying to thread the needle through the defenders, cannot. Finds a wide open. Hugo just misfired. His eyes lit up like a Christmas tree there. Owen rolls it to Lucas. Scramble for it, and here comes the dangerous Victor Hugo stops dead in his tracks, sends it back to his fellow teammates. Yeah, and Horton will pick up a foul there. That was just a, a little bit late on the, on the challenge after Victor Hugo passed it off. Hugo looks straight to the ref and asks for it, and I guess Mintenko says, well, yeah, you're right. So Hugo. Moreno, back to Hugo, using his head to keep it in play, but ends up in the hands of the Providence Pilots. It was Kyle Fair trying to find Horton there. It didn't work, and possession belongs to CMU with just over 20 minutes to go here in this second and final period. Sprawling to make the save there was Brayden Owen. So Moreno holds it. Finds Anderson. Anderson found the edge. Equal to the task was Braden Owen. Well, and you see how quick there Owen was to turn defense into offense. He's a normally a guy that plays center back and outdoor, and as soon as he had the ball in his hands, his eyes are up the field looking for a way to make something happen, but possession goes back to CMU, and it'll stay there after that touch. Randolph Lucas hustled to get it back, but of course it stays with the Blazers for right now. It was with Anderson. 
Now it's Moreno. Moreno to Hugo. Hugo looking far corner. Moreno rolls it to Horton. Horton runs the Providence Pilots offense here. Needing to get something going here down 2 0. Hugo forcing the issue. Stays with the Pilots. It's Benitez. And Horton again. Horton back to Benitez. Benitez flies solo. That kick deflected by Jensen. So corner kick is coming up here for 15 Lucas of the Pilots. And Owen was creeping in there. Losing it right at the last moment there was Victor Hugo. And Benitez back pedals, goes over to Horton, back where it started from with Benitez. Benitez holds at midcourt. It's Horton again. Horton back to Benitez. Back and forth they go. That shot's deflected. And wide open cage at the other end. Got to keep that in mind with Brayden Noen moving up in the play. Yeah, but at the same time, if, you, if they don't finish, it just becomes Pilots' ball right away again. Yeah, and they're able to possess. True. They're able to be the ones to create all the chances. So, yeah, there's pros and cons to both sides of it. Benitez, the fancy footwork to Horton. Horton, fake pass, her fake shot went to the pass instead. The sliding across was Utsi to make the save. Corner kick here for the Pilots. There's Horton, now Benitez. And here's Horton trying to create some magic here with Benitez. And Benitez's pass is deflected, so the Pilots double back and reset one more time, looking to put the pressure on this number one ranked CMU Blazers team. Bray Nolan hustles back and gets back between the pipes here for Providence. Trail 2-0, 17 minutes and change here left in this second and final period. And Will Anderson. Lost it, got it back. Anderson, great pass, stretching across and scoring. Finding the back of the net is Moreno. Yeah, just great anticipation by him again to, to sense that that ball was either going to be played on net or played wide. And that backdoor pass or, just, or a shot wide of the net is one of the most dangerous things if your teammate's anticipating it. He gives them a commanding 3 0 lead now. We're under 17 minutes to go here. Yeah, McIntyre Red, he was looking like he was going to find the score sheet there. It just eluded him, but Moreno was at the right place at the right time, extending their lead to 3 0 here. And Horton gets tangled up with Hugo. Yeah, just a little clip there. One foul each uh, now, clock stops at 16.35. Still a long way to go for either team to, to get to the 10 meter line. So Hugo and McIntyre Red make the oh. wall back to Horton again. Yeah, can't move until it's touched. If they had gone and fired that shot off Victor Hugo, he would have taken yellow, but. Benitez let it go, it was way high. You know, talking about the, the cards and missing games and whatnot, the crazy thing is Moreno actually had to miss the game against ACC with three games left on the schedule when BU and ACC both traveled to, to play CMU and Prov the same weekend. He missed the ACC game, returned to play BU, and uh, had tackled the player, kind of the last man back, and took a red card in that game. Had to miss the season finale uh, at the end there against, uh, can't call if it was actually against Red River or St. B that they played to finish the season. Um, but he served his one game suspension for the second time and he's back. But uh, had that been, had it been a different reason, had he been out for multiple games, he wouldn't have been playing today. So McIntyre Red tried to stop that one, put it out of play instead. And we got a timeout called on the play. Look, 15-34 to go. It's 3-0 for the number one ranked CMU Blazers here. 
Yeah, time out there by Providence. They're going to try to draw, they either try to draw something up or make an adjustment. Sometimes these are a very specific play that you'll see, and once in a while they're executed to perfection and they look awesome. Or uh, one player doesn't quite make the right touch and you kind of feel like you wasted the timeout, but gives us a little bit of a break. And Yeah, this will wrap up the men's semifinals, and we got the women's ones, five and seven. And then the big championship games go down tomorrow here at the Healthy Living Center at 1 o'clock for the men's championship. Bobcats have already booked their spot. Looking like it's going to be the top two teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe unless the pilots can get the rally caps on here in that men's championship game, and then we'll see how things shake themselves out in the wash for the women's final at 3 o'clock tomorrow. The first time that the BU Bobcats have had an opportunity to host the Manitoba College's Athletic Conference Championship, and it's the Futsal Final Four that's been taking place here this weekend. You now we got a really good crowd for... The men's game, we were at various schools in Brandon promoting the event kind of all week, and we had a really good turnout for the Bobcat men's game at one, and of course the Bobcat women's team will be in action seven bells tonight. So needing the offense to get going in a hurry here are the Providence Pilots at 15.30 and change here in the second and final period, and it goes to Horton one more time. And right back where it started from, Horton trying to thread the needle in the goal mouth area. Benitez finding Horton one more time. The pass down low to Dick, holding it long enough for Horton to pick it up. I guess the one thing that surprises me is how few goals are scored into the empty net when teams bring the goalkeeper out. You'd think that it would just happen in bunches, but there it is. <laughs> there it is, paying off right now. Braden Owen comes in wearing the goalkeeper's shirt and makes it 3-1, gets his team on the board and trying to provide a spark. You yeah. can't cover all five of them. <laughs> yeah, Braden Owen giving the guys on the bench a little bit of a pep talk there as he crept right in. Magnificent header, and it's 3-1. Yeah, you'd think, though, with that goal he pulled it, you know, the Blazers would have no problem, but I guess it's the same thing like in hockey, trying to hit an empty net, too. It's easier said than done, I suppose. Well, it's just hard to get the ball back. Yeah. When they, have, they have one extra guy, and then the mentality kind of shifts. If you ever give it up, you're just high pressure all over that player. Don't give them any space and, uh, and knock it out of play. No harm done. But. So Owen gets the goal, and oh, coming right back at you was Will Anderson, and he just missed. Under 14 to play here, and Bray knowing the goal score. And here he comes again. Yeah, we saw a three goal lead cut down to one just a few hours ago, and Pilots looking to do the same thing. So Christian Dick was in hot pursuit, lost it though. Blazers have possession. Marino. A couple of goals here this afternoon. It's Hugo, now Anderson. McIntyre Red had a chance at it. Now it's Braden Owen again. He rolls it down to Benitez, and here they come again. All hands on deck here for the pilots here with the net wide open at the other end. Here's Horton dropping it off to Braden Owen. Benitez trying to work his way in. That one's over the top of the bar. And Owen, who's going to get his steps in today, yeah, he'll, he's putting some miles on here. Creeping out of that net every time. There's a long pass. It sails out of play. So Benitez goes over to Horton, where it started from. That pass deflects off. Moreno and out of play, so it's Pilots ball one more time here. Quick shot, it missed the far corner. Now there's some value in these games and winning by a lot. Like ideally for CMU in this case right now, if you can pour three or four goals in, you can afford to to give a few extra guys some time. Not that there's really a, not that they have a the end of the bench that they can throw out there. There's a lot of depth on that team, but 
if you can get a few guys some rest, that's five fewer minutes for a guy to get injured or to take a red card in an awkward spot and have to miss the final. You start to kind of, you can't help but think ahead a little bit, but not right now. It's only a two-old game with 12 minutes left. So it's Horton, Owen, Benitez. Getting a piece of that one was Utsi. And it knocked something off either. <laughs> it almost looked like it knocked a piece of tape or something off of his hand on that rocket. So at midcourt right now is Benitez of the Pilots. To Dick. Backward started from with Benitez at midcourt, right on the Bobcat logo. Now Horton, here's Benitez. He lets it fly, split save. Scramble for it, diving on it was Utsi. Just that quick release from Benitez off the kind of a toe punt there. He, almost he doesn't even really know where the ball's going to go, just at the net somewhere. And good reaction by Utsi to keep the two-goal advantage. Benitez, Horton. Back one more time with Benitez. Now it's Horton. Stops. Benitez, Horton. Staying right at midcourt now. That was with Braden Owen. He got the purple jersey on. Here's Horton trying to deke around the Blazers defender and bust in. He's going to hold. He's going to go back to Benitez. Benitez to Horton. Horton with a little flip pass. It's stopped by Christian Dick. It's tangled up, but walking the tightrope and keeping it in play are the pilots. Ref calls advantage. That'll be one foul up to, to CMU, but we'll keep going. There's Horton with the kick. And you'd see he's equal to the task making the save. Here goes Victor Hugo busting in, sliding. Yeah, there he was. No gloves, a little bit of a bigger rebound. Cleared away safely. I bet you if he's wearing gloves, actually, Prov pounces on that one, and it might be a goal. So Hugo, Moreno, sending it back into the Blazer zone. The kick deflected off a player and out of play. Stays with the Blazers here, though. Under 10 to play. Moreno flicks it up, trying to find the edge was Ryan Jensen. Horton Benitez. Now to Owen. Benitez stops, stays right at midcourt right now as the pilots try to get something cooking here. Under 10 to play, Braden Owen. Pass down low, back to Owen one more time. Victor Hugo kicking it out of play. It's on the line. Now back in the play for Braden Owen. He's the goal scorer for the Pilots, Benitez. They're keeping it right now. Here yeah. goes Horton, now Owen, now down low, trying to find the edge down there. Was Randolph Lucas, number 15. Here's Horton loading it up. He missed fires. Yeah, Blazers have been stuck in that uh, that diamond penalty killing kind of formation for most of the second half here. Keeping their offense at bay pretty well because they can really only score on counters or if the ball goes out of play. But well, Hugo and Moreno trying to create a highlight reel marker there. Didn't work, and it's Horton for Providence. Now Benitez, Benitez. Went down low to Lucas. And Lucas with the corner kick. That one almost <laughs> flies up into the walking track area. You'd see. And Matt Higgs with a calm catch. Yeah, Keeping ice the water in play. his veins. Aaron, there's Hugo. Ooh. Here's Horton. Stops dead in his tracks, goes over to Benitez. Now down low to Randolph Lucas. Yeah, good eye, just crossed the line. And a turnover, here goes Horton. And crashes right into Ryan Jensen. Back the other way go the Blazers. It's Hugo. There's Moreno. Instead, there's Braden Owen with the catch. And Owen drops it and race right for it. But then we got a whistle. We got a player down. Yeah, Lucas is down, kind of grabbing his ankle there. He'll hop up. 
a lot less flopping in this game. You'll see there's a few hard challenges there, but guys trying to stay on their feet. It's not like landing on grass, so you don't see as many guys going down easy because it kind of hurts. Hitting that gym floor with your knees or whatever isn't uh, is a punishment you'd only take if you really need to. Benitez, now Horton. Backwards started from with Benitez. Here's Horton again. Thought about it, keeps it. Benitez again. The flex, ping pong ball effect. Long distance, they score. Yeah, eventually it's going to happen, and Moreno saw his opportunity. This time makes no mistake. He had an extra second there. Nobody really collapsed on him right on the ball, and he had 15 on the regular season. He's probably not going to miss too many of those. 4-1 now, under seven minutes left, and they look in control. Now you got to pull out all the stops if you're the pilots now. Benitez. I just can't get anything towards the net. Good diamond formation, right? Am I right? <laughs> so the Blazers getting tangled up with the pilots there on the end line. With six minutes to go. Moreno, Hugo. Sprawling save and a good one at that by Braden Owen. He still only has four seconds on the ball here. No one's counting though. So Anderson, long pass off the head of Horton. Victor Hugo trying to bust That's in. Tried a little bicycle kick there. There's Moreno again. Yeah, I'm not sure that was by choice. He kind of got a little bit of a pull from behind. So Horton, Benitez off Moreno. Pilots have to double back. That one got through this time, but not anywhere towards the net. Is it deflected off a blazer and out of play? Now a corner kick. Here's Horton loading it up again. Yeah. Here goes Anderson. 22. Horton holds. Now back with Benitez one more time. Benitez, fancy footwork to Horton. Horton trying to find the edge and cut through the defenders. He will, because oh, he couldn't find open real estate there. Got tangled up with the Blazers defenders. Yeah, tangled up, but a key foot on the ball. A lot of the time, if you touch that ball first and then the player trips over it or, or over the leg, that's gonna, they're gonna let that one go. So, Mr. Anderson. Back door. Anderson still got it. Sends it back to Ryan Jensen, 10. Utsi's got it. The netminder, the goalkeeper for CMU Blazers. And two on one break the other way. We got a whistle, though. Somebody must have been offside. Handball. <laughs> yeah, no offsides in this one. You can cherry pick if you want. We got a little confrontation here. You can cherry pick if you want to, eh? Yeah, well, just doesn't really do you any favors, especially when uh, when the other side's already bringing the goalkeeper up, and then you're playing five on three effectively on defense. But so Ryan Jensen He'll play puts it. his hands up. That one's swallowed. Well done by Owen. Hugh Victor Hugo was ready to to finish off whatever rebound there was, but he collected it. Yeah, Owen was like a sponge there, soaked up that one. Long pass, trying to go to Moreno. Said, my bad, no, no problems. Benitez back to Horton. He does most of the ball handling duties here for the pilots. Here's Benitez, little flip shot. And oh. juggled right in there, and it's in. Yeah, and a little score. It. <laughs> it wasn't pretty, but it's in there. <laughs> that was Randolph Lucas. 
Yeah, getting the last touch on it with uh, whatever part it takes to, to cut the lead to 4-2 now. Three minutes and counting, though. Yeah, that one kind of just fell into his lap there. What? Cuts the deficit down to two. No pictures on the scoreboard. No, that's exactly right. Here's Marino sliding across and making the stop. Braden no, a nice save. Now you probably use that one a few times on the golf course, eh? Oh, yeah. All the time. Stopping it right now are the Blazers. Down low, trying to find the edge and do a nice little fancy kick towards the netminder was Marino. Now, do you expect them to, I was just going to say, do you think Owen will start creeping out here again? And here we go. Well, he's been doing it all half. I don't think he'd stop now with uh, just a few minutes left. And yeah, another kick into Providence. We're creeping up to that two minute mark where the clock's going to stop and a lot of things can happen. CMU still has its timeout. We'll see if, uh, if Anderson Pereira elects to use that to slow him down. I feel like he might if it gets to 4-3. So Benitez to Horton. Horton trying to find the edge, and he collides into Jansen Cornelson, number five for your CMU Blazers. Yeah, Solis Jansen Cornelson stepping in late in the game here, and well, I guess he uh, made an impact on it with that. We'll uh, see if that amounts to anything. Two pilots in front of the net looking to create some chaos here. Owen kicks it, out of play it went. Pilots maintain it though. Under two minutes to play now. Pilots have gotta go, stretching, trying to do the splits there was Yutzi. Yeah, saves like that are for the young goalkeepers. So Blazers threading the needle. Long lead pass that Moreno almost drilled home. Here's another chance at it, off the chest of Braden Owen and out of play. <laughs> Three big plays by the Pilots there. A few last-ditch efforts by Dick, uh, Horton, and, uh, and Owen wearing the keeper jersey there to keep this one from being pretty much over. Minute 45 left, 4-2. From the corner, now to Moreno keeps it. Lost it though, to Jensen, swallowing that one up into the bread basket was Utsi. Now Marino on the edge, flips it up, trying to find an open teammate. He found McIntyre Red, and Red almost found the back of the net. Bowling ball pass to Horton. Horton lets it fly. Kick save by Utsi. And out for another corner there. It's Benitez again with the goal scorer, Randolph Lucas, also on the floor here. So Benitez goes to the netminder, Brayton Owen, Owen loads it up, that shot is deflected. Back the other way they go, with a header, and there's Owen. Charlie Hustle, Brayden Owen, to Horton, turnover. Owen, calm, cool, collected, just comes back between the pipes. And now he'll know he won't get the chance to join his teammates. He's going to have to dive towards Ooh. that one. That one's a misfire. This is going to be a red. See if we can play that one back a little bit to, to look at it one more time. But that was. Uh, here we go, Thomas, right here. Oh, we kind of missed it. Just outside the, the screen, but it, he either got him with his. Uh, with a headbutt to the back of the head or uh, or an elbow or something like that, but that wasn't pretty. That's a red. I don't know if he has, uh, if he's back next year, but next futsal season, he won't be back for the first game. Those suspensions will carry over, and if it is, uh, depending on how that gets written up, it's probably a minimum of four games he's out for after this one. That's just something that has no no place in a game. There's a minute left. Yes, you're losing. But, no, you really don't have the right to do that to anybody, whether you're on a soccer field, a hockey rink, or anything. You got Bray Nolan, though, that's you know, nice to see him come over there and, and try and help McIntyre Red up here a little bit. You know, it's some nice sportsmanship there on, on his part. Who I think he's got to be the player of the game for sure. For Providence, he's got to be Owen. I mean, he's been great. Well, absolutely. He's done it all for, for them. Uh, 
like we talked about before the game, a veteran guy who knows futsal really well. Um, it takes a few years to really figure it out. Nice, yeah, good gesture by him to. Well, it's interesting you mentioned all that field. about knowledge and all. I gotta tip my hat to you. You know your stuff with this game. Like, where did that all kind of start? Is just by playing, I guess, and then you kind of get obviously emotionally invested in it. Or well, I appreciate it. I probably I don't even know. I probably only played about four games one time when our when first place was locked up. Like I said, we had all these awesome hockey goalies that were that ran the show. Evan Balzer and Robbie Friesen were the two guys before. I was just their backup uh, while I played volleyball there, and then the emergency backup when needed. But been around the game enough of a sports nerd to read the rule book for whatever game I play or watch because I just I don't like not knowing those things but really appreciate that and glad I can help this make a little more sense to anybody. So Blazers up on offense with the final seconds clicking away here 30 and a little bit more to go and it's going to be the Bobcats yeah, 24 like, point, unless there's a, barring something really dramatic here, it'll be the Blazers and the Bobcats, a top two seeds facing off for the championship at one o'clock tomorrow on what should be a really great final. With Hugo, got it, almost got it back. I spoke a little bit too soon there. I thought he was gonna take that pass to the house. Here's Hugo again, down low to Concepcion. Yeah, and again, uh, Providence playing this out down a player as well. So when he come back there, they don't have that five on four option anymore with 14 seconds left, uh, serving the the red card, uh, the two minute penalty basically. Uh, Marino back to Hugo. Hugo. He went to Concepcion. Concepcion still got it, and the buzzer goes, and CMU Blazers. Number one ranked team in the MCAC for men's futsal have booked their spot for the championship final. with a 4-2 victory over the Providence Pilots here at the Healthy Living Center. So Thomas Friesen, it sets it up. Number one, number two in the league will face off tomorrow in the championship game. It was the Blazers scoring four goals, giving up two in their semifinal. It was the Bobcats winning four to three on their side. And I guess quickly, what are you kind of expecting tomorrow after we've seen the, the Blazers put this one to bed? Well, first things first, the big question is going to be uh, a hit to the head there. Daniel McIntyre Ridd still kind of grabbing it a little bit. Well, that's going to be something that their medical staff has to monitor, see how he feels for tomorrow. Wasn't starting there, but played big minutes and, and is a factor. Other than that, it's two teams that tied each other here 3 3 early on in the season. Um, that was a thriller that uh, went right down to the wire. Glufka scored a big goal for the Bobcats to tie it 4-3 late in their in their their last meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, then 15 minutes left, kind of the floodgate broke open and CMU scored a bundle of goals to pull away and win it 8-3. Um, but that was one. Jesse Rozier was out there. He had the flu. He didn't make the trip. A few other guys were had a few knocks, a few little things, a little bit sick. Um, I expect a way better effort from the Bobcats in that one, and well, it's the final that we were final that you're expecting, final that it probably should be. So, uh, so good to see. So the men's semifinals are in the books, and advancing are the Blazers and the Bobcats, and they'll face off one o'clock tomorrow for the championship title. Women's semifinals are coming up here at five and seven from the Healthy Living Center, and the winners will advance to the women's championship game at three o'clock tomorrow. Coming up next at five o'clock, we've got the Rebels, and we've got the Blazers facing off in the first of two women's semifinal games. So buckle up, come and join us here in what? what time is it right now? 45 minutes or so. And then we'll have the call on the women's semifinal, the first coming up at five, the second one at seven. That one will feature the host Bobcats in action against the top ranked Les Rouge. We'll be back. And the player of the game for the Canadian Mennonite University Blazers, number 14, Matthäus Morano. And we'd also like to take a moment to recognize some achievements from the MCAC. Here right now is MCAC Executive Director Bill Wedlake, who will present plaques to this year's All-Stars. 
from the CMU Blazers, Mateos Moreno. And from the Providence Pilots, Giovanni Benitez. That concludes our awards for this contest. Uh, starting at 5 o'clock, it'll start with the women's bracket as the Red River College Rebels will take on the Canadian Mennonite University Blazers starting at 5 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you.